Hello, my name is Brito, I play Raid Shadow Legends, and I love my wife, and today we're going to be talking about the Odin Trial Tournament considerations during the fusion. It's going to be starting in about 10, 10 and a half hours here, and it does coincide, you can see right here, with Dungeon Divers. So Dungeon Divers starts, at least for me on my side, starts in seven and a half hours, three hours after that, we see that the Odin Trial Tournament is going to be starting. And it also coincides with CVC, which starts pretty soon as well. But I wanted to go ahead and dive into this because I skimmed through it and thought to myself, hey, this was really put together, or this was really well put together. All right. So uh, this is Joe Price 001. He says, we have the Odin's Trial Tournament in less than 24 hours, which also coincides with that. I just said that. My summary of the options is courtesy of data mining from Saf shown in the video here. Hey guys, Saf here and, with another Raid Shadow okay, Legends so video. So Saf actually put out a video talking about dungeon drop rates and Odin. And I think he's probably one of the best, if not the best person to go to in terms of drop rates. I'm trying to see if um, I can get the too long didn't read answer around here. Actually, you know what? He's probably going to dive into this. All right. When it comes to tournament and dungeon diver points for energy ppe the stages to consider are oh so he is going to dive into this okay so the stages to consider are 20 24 and 30. there isn't much incentive to farm any of the stages in between although if you cannot farm stage 30 and wish to farm the highest stage you can then you'll have to consult the video for the ppe values for stages 25 to 29 but he is going to break it down for us right here Stage 20, the tournament points per energy spent is 1.11. The dungeon diver points per energy is 0.76, right? So these are the, I'm assuming, if I'm understanding this correctly, the average points or the points that you get per cost of energy, something like that. I, I've never really understood this. Maybe somebody who's got a bigger brain than I can um, uh, explain this part, but that's for stage 20. 24. The tourney PPE is 1.01. .01. Dungeon Divers PPE is 0.71. Stage 30, you're looking at a tournament point value of per energy um, 0.95. Dungeon Divers PPE is 0.68. As we can see, stage 20 is going to be the most efficient for maximizing your Dungeon Diver points along with the tournament points. This might end up being an important consideration since the Odin tournament is sandwiched between the Dragon and Fire Knight tournaments for the fusion. It is worth considering the Odin tournament for the fusion regardless since it's going to take more energy to complete the dungeon divers for the fusion fragments than the energy needed to complete the 1-2 to dungeon tournaments for their fusion fragments. So he's basically saying, do stage 20. If all you care about are maximizing points for both the tournament for the Odin tournament and for dungeon divers, do stage 20 because you're going to have the best point value, right? And you can see here, stage 20, the PPE here is 1.11 versus 24 and 30, which is 1.01 and 0.95 respectively. And it's the same thing that we see here with stage 20 coming out on top at 0.76 versus 0.71 and then at stage 30.68 because the cost of running those dungeons with the energy is a lot higher than what you would get if we're talking about just points. Now, if you don't give a crap and you just want the gear, I am assuming the highest chances of getting the absolute possible potential best gear is going to be on stage 30, but realistically, how many of us are doing 30, right? So there's that to consider. I personally think stage 20 is gonna be a lot faster to do just because you can probably knock it out in 10 to 15 seconds, uh, depending, right? And um, when it comes to the second part that he was talking about, when he says to consider the Odin tourney for the fusion regardless, you gotta remember that this is a limited time dungeon, right? Now, you can see right here, there's a timer. It ends in six weeks, right? In six weeks, just about, you're not going to be able to farm this dungeon anymore, which means you won't be able to farm pinpoint accessories anymore. So this is something that you want to be doing anyway. Um, and 
you know, we, we've talked ad nauseum about uh, the value of pinpoint gear, at least at, at the very least getting accessories. So that's something that you're going to want to do. The second thing that he mentioned was dungeon divers usually takes a lot more to complete than just the two dungeons that are going to be running in between this, right? So we have the dragon tournament, and then we have another tournament, I think, I think it's uh, Fire Knight or Ice Golem, one of those that's going to be coming up after this, but it also coincides with this second Dungeon Divers event. Now, to finish out the Dungeon Divers event, probably even to get the fragments that you need, you're probably going to be needing to do more than what's required of the tournaments, the two tournaments anyways. So why not do the Odin tournament on top of that? A competing consideration is the quality of artifacts and accessories. Since this is a limited time dungeon, many might want to farm the highest stage possible for the highest quality drop, even though it will be less efficient for the tournament and dungeon diver points. However, as Saf has discovered, you might still want to farm either 20 or 24 because they offer better chances of accessory drops. I did not know that. So at 20 and 24, that's if you're just aiming for accessories, yeah. You're in the right spot, 2024, that's cool, that's good to know. Here are the expected accessory drops per refill, assuming you're at 130. Stage 20, accessory drops per refill is 2.56. Stage 24, 2.42. Stage 25 to 30, 2.21. If you're already farming stages 25 to 30, dropping down to stage 24 is going to net you around 9% more accessories on average while dropping down to stage 20 is going to net you around 16 percent more accessories on average this is an important consideration because if you're farming pinpoint rings and amulets to boost speed of your support champions as opposed to farming four six nine piece pinpoint sets you might actually be better off farming 20 24 despite the slight drop in gear quality even if you actually want to complete four six nine pinpoint sets for your champs, you might still opt for stages which offer more accessories, simply because it's already quite hard to get accessory drops for the right fractions. One final important consideration for this fusion is food farming. Has anybody tried farming stage 20 or 24 solo with a dual champ in order to level food? Now that they mention this, I'm thinking, is it even possible to do it with like WTD and Sun Wukong, right? Because Right now, the team that I run, well, for, for stage 20, it's pretty fast, but for like stage 30 that I'm doing, WTD, Walking Tomb Drang, and Sun Wukong are kind of vital to that team. Anyway, uh, my preference this fusion will be to farm stage 20, and ideally I want to prep more food for the upcoming champ training tournament, but haven't had a chance to tinker with any solo or duo teams. Spudzy J says, my problem is not getting pinpoint accessories, it's quite the contrary. I get tons of pinpoint accessories, but 97% of the time, they're five star rares. My issue is getting decent accessories, getting pinpoint artifacts to complete a set. So for this reason, I'm gonna be farming the highest level that I can at 100% success rate, which happens to be 29 without re-gearing champs specifically for it. And that's a good point, right? The lower you go, the less likely you're going to get the better gear. And if you're end game, you, at least me, and most people I know, you're selling pretty much all of your blues and five stars, right? Now, not everybody deals with their gear and manages their gear the way that I do, but I know a lot of end gamers who don't want five star rares. In fact, if you're um, doing a really hard dungeon, it doesn't make any sense that you should be even receiving five stars anymore. I, I honestly, and this just might be me, for Odin's dungeon, I think from 25 to 26, or 25 and up to 30, I don't even think you should be getting five star gear. If it were up to me, you wouldn't even be getting epics, or you wouldn't even be getting rares. You'd be getting epic six stars and above, and that's just me, because Odin is not an easy dungeon. And a lot could be said like this for some of the other dungeons, right? If you're doing like hard, I don't know, 7 to 10 of Fire Knight, right? Hard Fire Knight stages 7 to 10, not exactly the easiest to do. I say no more five star gear, no more blues, just epics, six stars and above. That's that's what I would want if I could, you know, be behind Polarium's 
council meetings or whatever and throwing my hat, my suggestion into the hat, that's what I would. It's worth regearing to get that one more level for mythical drops. Oh, so level 30 has mythical drops. Do we know what the difference is between 29 and 30? I personally don't. So do you guys know at what point are we getting mythical gear? Is it 26 and up? I've heard conflicting things. I've heard it's 26 and up. I've heard it's 27 and up. And now I'm thinking, is it only 30? I'm going to spend energy. I'm going to try and get the best gear possible, even if it means my points aren't as efficient. Just my strategy. Modern Thinker OG. <laughs> this guy. Very well done post. Thank you for putting this together in such a clean and clear fashion. Still such a bad game design where you're not efficiently farming the higher stages. People able to complete higher stages should get more points, I agree, but I also get it from a business perspective. It would be bad for Polarium that we get the best gear and the most points. My plan under the expectation, we'll keep getting these Odin tournaments periodically, is to run level 20. Every time a tournament is live until I get ample 6 star accessories for every faction. I know it's going to take a while and some Curse City champs will have to settle for 5 star rares, but it is what it is. I can run about 28 successfully, but I find Supersonic and Protection better for accessory rows since Intercept can be stolen and Supersonic is incredible, is incredible for cut-in. This is also true. I don't think I've talked about this, but my Armands is in a Supersonic set. Great for cutting in. Um, yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory.